The Harry Potter movies are packed full of a lot of stuff, and VFX is one of them. There's a lot of. <laughs> so the platform nine and three quarters scene is a good example of basically a sleight of hand. The coolest water ball I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, look how good that is, dude. No, no. <sighs> oh! So how do you think they did that shot? Thanks to our sponsor, Vessi. Stick around to the end to figure out how you can get 25 bucks off your pair of Vessi shoes. Guys, welcome back to VFX Artists React. We are finally doing it. The ultimate Harry Potter episode. Guys, I actually watched all eight movies, believe it or not. Every single one. So I'm, I'm very excited <laughs> to break these effects down with y'all. Dude, I'm excited too. We will do our best to cover the coolest effects that we can, but there are eight movies, each one filled with visual effects. We're gonna go over all that stuff. It's gonna be sweet. So let's let's just jump in. Shut up! Shut up! Oh, dude, this scene. This scene! Oh. This is like such a big moment in the movie too, because it's just like, wait, what? She's inflating. It looks so good, right? Yeah. It's incredible. This Dude! feels like it's 100% practical. I mean, you know, minus like a wire paint out or something. I mean, that's exactly it. This entire scene is practical. Really? Dude, that's incredible. They actually had like three different fat suits that she was able to wear, and they actually had a bunch of different bladders inside of the actual suit that could inflate. It's an actual physical prosthetic, and none of that is digital. Like Dude. the way it folds when she moves her head around? Yeah. Such a good little touch that you get from the practical. They actually put a stunt double in the big suit because they put her up in the air on wires, and so all the actual digital effects happening here is just wire removal. I'm just blown away at the gravity effects that they have. It actually looks like she's bouncing like a balloon that's full of helium and to get that wire set up and to be able to replicate that look, I imagine is very difficult. Did they replace the ceiling maybe? Is the ceiling CG? I'm imagining the ceiling itself is not there on set. I think it's like a classic sitcom where you have all the walls go straight up and you have like the crown molding and then just nothing. You got rigging and lights above that. Cause for her to go from the dining room to this like uh, little patio room, she's probably attached to like four wires. I think so, yeah, no. I think she's attached to a few wires cause notice how they cut. They never actually show her go entirely through the doorway. They show it through a series of cuts. So yeah, I, I wanted to bring this up because this is a cool example of something that was a cool mesh between, you know, doing everything practically, but using visual effects to make it happen. So the platform nine and three quarters scene is a good example of basically sleight of hand. There's effects here, you know, basic rotoscoping. It's actually not that crazy, but we have this transition where Harry Potter enters wizard train station land. So my first guess is that this was done in multiple shots. You know, it's funny because like that's how I would do it too, but they don't cut. This is the same shot of Harry the whole time. The way they did the shot is pretty cool. So this background here is actually the background we see later after he's gone through the pillar, but they've done VFX to replace the cool old fashioned steam locomotive with these new trains. So that's basically just an image in the background here. And if you watch, you see how the reflections don't move on the train oh, at all. Right. It's even 2D, it doesn't actually distort. Yep, it's just a picture. It's literally just a picture in that corner because no one's looking at it. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at Harry's face. Face. Yep. So what happens after the screen goes dark? What's happening there? So they just, they straight up just do a lighting gig. They just turn off the lights and they do a new light where that turns on here on the side. The brick wall behind him is CG. Really? That's a full CG brick wall? Full CG brick wall. Okay. And it's a fake, and it's a a fake Harry Potter shadow right yeah. there. And the thing is they had this problem like, okay, so how do we reveal the wall? Like, does it just fade in? Like, that's kind of lame. How do we reveal the wall? They just went with a tried and true wipe. So as that bellhop walks across, it reveals the wall. It's really right. subtle. Yeah, okay, sure, but sure. But it causes your eye to completely miss when the wall appears. It's just there. But these are like the psychological tricks that a good VFX artist can really implement to make impactful shots. And then he steps around the corner and they reveal the set that's actually there. But okay, no, I'm confused. It's a wall that extends forward. It's not a pillar. Yeah, that's CG. On the right? Yeah, on the, the brick right. wall. Man. And you can see the texture tiling. So you can actually see a repeating pattern going up the side of the brick wall there. Yeah, that's so funny. In this day and age, that train would be entirely CG. Yeah, but totally. They don't have the capabilities to make the train look realistic with the steam like that back in the day. Like the technology does not exist. So they had the train there for real. And this is a situation where it's easier to put something over the train and then reveal it 
than it is to have the thing there and then try to comp in a new big awesome cool looking train. It's like, no, make that your real stuff and then paint it out later for the beginning of the shot. Yeah, it's always about what is the easiest or cheapest thing to do. These days, it's hard to make a big train like that for real, but it's easy to make one digitally. So it's <laughs> like, if we were to redo that shot, we would have the beginning of it all be real and then the end of it be fake. Yep. Welcome, Harry, to Diagonal Alley. Di Diagonal Alley. <laughs> So you might be like, hey, it's Harry Potter. They have all the money in the world. They built this crazy set. They actually did build a crazy set, but the set ends like 10 feet into the air. Well, there's your money, Harry. Gringotts, the wizard bike. So this shot right here, it looks real, doesn't it? Yeah. How do you think they did it? I don't know, Nico, how they did it. <laughs> you know how I did it. It's miniature, <laughs> it's, it's a, miniature, right? It's a miniature. It's a miniature. It's a miniature. But here's the challenge. They have a moving camera and they film people for real and they look up at where this thing is supposed to be. Now these days, if you did that shot, you'd film your shot, you know, you'd have your blue screen or something up and then you'd go into the computer and you'd camera track the shot or match move the shot it's yeah. called. Basically the computer analyzes points in the scene and based on how those points move, it can figure out where the camera was and where it was moving and what it was doing. So they did that of course, but here's the thing. They don't now have just a 3D model they can drop in. What they need to do is take your miniature, get another camera, put it on a computer controlled arm, miniaturize the movement that they did, and then replicate that exact camera motion on that computer arm, filming the miniature, so they can stick the miniature shot into this shot and all the motion lines are. Right. Which is such like a clunky and hard way to go about doing things because the cameras stay the same size. The sensors stay the same size. The lenses stay the same size. And now you're trying to marry these two shots together. And one of the challenges they faced with the shot that took them a long time to fix was lens distortion. Oh. Because it's a wide angle shot and there's a little bit of lens distortion in it, but the distortion is different for a miniature that's filmed up close versus an actual building that's filmed far away. Totally. Yeah. I think that's something that is so cool and I want to try and mess with. I've literally been wanting to get like some sort of motion control system for years now just so we can experiment with bringing back something like this. Yeah, like that that to me is like, that's how you make a movie look real. Little quick trivia VFX moment for you guys. All these candles floating in the air. CG, right? Wrong. 100% real. Those are all practical candles. It just makes your job so much easier as a filmmaker to like have a magical space to work with. Yep. Gryffindor! Yay, you're in a wizard. Harry Potter. Okay, but looking at this hat, so obviously the entire hat is CG because it's like a character, right? Mm -hmm. But it's interfacing with a person. Right, so they have a wireframe hat that the actors are working with. Oh, really? Now the thing is, when that hat brim falls across their face, you see a shadow fall on their face. And this is a big problem you have when you have CGI objects casting shadows, is that there should be zero directional lighting coming from the top. In fact, what should be happening is Harry Potter in the shadow should be lit from the bottom, because the only light that'd be reaching his face there would be light bouncing off the floor. Like right here, technically you wouldn't have the highlight on his glasses, because it'd be reflecting the bottom of the hat, which is in darkness. Yep. In fact, actually, let me grab the sombrero. Get our animatronic sorting hat. All right, I got a sorting hat here. So now as Ren puts this on, we're gonna lose all this top lighting here. Yeah, also keep a look at the specular highlights on his glasses, how they disappear. Look at his nose. See how the bottom of his nose is now brighter than the top of his nose? Now remove the hat. Now the top of his nose is brighter than the bottom of his nose. So you put that hat down, there's no more light coming from this direction. The only light's coming from this direction. So his face is now underlit. But Harry Potter's face with the hat is not underlit. Wait, but which house am I in? You're in my house now. Oh, <laughs> uh, son. <laughs> Gryffindor! <laughs> it's such a subtle thing. No one would catch this. Like, no one in the theater would catch this. But it, it's a thing. It totally is a thing. But that being said, this is an effects artist trying to compensate for decisions made on set. And I think they're doing a pretty good job. They're, they're doing, doing a, great a solid job. Because, I mean, look at the shape of that shadow. It actually deforms around his face perfectly. And his nose. It, yeah. See? It comes up over his nose. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Everything about this is perfect except for the fact that an artist had to somehow go in and paint out directional lighting on Harry Potter. But they still did a great job. The compositors on this film are, like, world-class compositors. There are so many effects across eight movies. Movies. Of course, we can't talk about all of the effects in this one episode, so we will be doing another Harry Potter special. But the difference this time is that we are going to specifically use your comment recommendations for that second episode. So leave a comment down below, we'll read them, and we'll review them on camera. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Intriguing, isn't it? <gasps> no. No! 
Ah! Oh! How did they do that? They did it. God, they must have had real wizards on set. That probably slid by a lot of people. I don't know. It's pretty in your face. You're like, wow, I just went through a mirror. Concentrate. Hey, Sophia. Be brave. <laughs> The Bogart is interesting and all, like they do some really cool transitions. But for me personally, the thing that is most compelling from this whole scene is just the camera and how they use it to go through the mirror. All right, well, sorry about that. Uh... Interesting. So we've been in their imaginations the whole time and now we're back to reality. That's so cool. Oh my God. However, look at Harry. He's flipped. <gasps> the entire scene is flipped. The Wait. ending shot of this entire thing is reversed. His patch is on the wrong side. His scar is on the wrong side. What are they implying? Are we in a different dimension now? We were in a different dimension the whole time. And when they started learning defense against the dark arts, they were actually in the real world just for a moment. No, I think it <laughs> I don't think anyone actually gave that too much thought. They're just like, we're going through. It has to be a mirror image of what you're seeing because you know it's, it's a reflection. So how do you think they did that shot? I have an idea. Well, first you get your looking at the mirror shot, right? You move forward at a set speed, figure out a way to do that. Whether it's controlled or you just have a little song playing in your head, you're hitting marks at a certain speed, whatever it is. And you flip your camera or set up your people for the actual angle that you're seeing through the mirror. And then you have a little CGI thing in the middle. I just try to match the speed twice and then blend between them. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. The camera's just pushing in on like this nothing thing there. And they're tracking that shot and rendering in this cabinet that has, you know, a mirror front. All they do is they take the footage of the second filmed shot and just put that on a plane behind the camera and so that the cabinet itself is reflecting that. So that means at some point they're transitioning from the reflection of the real footage to the real footage. Exactly, yeah. And it's done even more intensely right here at the end. Because notice the mirror moves. You know, the whole door is open and it's reflecting the side of the room there. They actually had to have footage of the side of that room there built out in 3D space. And it happens so fast, you know, it's, it's a very dynamic shot. It works very well. I just thought it was, it was, it was a pretty cool touch of filmmaking that, again, requires visual effects to make happen. Dude, pretty cool. That's amazing. <laughs> It's so good. I think magic is cool, but I'm kind of saddened by the fact that no one's done like the kind of stuff that you think magic should be able to do, especially if you play some D&D. Yeah, magic can be brutal, but this is a children's movie franchise. They can't be brutal. But what if someone could, you know, make it brutal? Yeah, what if someone could make it brutal? Almost like if, if Harry Potter was rated R. What if someone already did all that and the video's coming out tomorrow on the <laughs> Corridor Crew channel? That's right, we made rated R Harry Potter. We took some of our favorite moments and we made them violent. Like really violent, like seriously <laughs> violent. So Harry Potter rated R is coming out tomorrow on this channel. If you're not subscribed and you want to see it, consider subscribing. So a major character in these movies is Voldemort and he doesn't come into the picture until like the fourth movie. One of the key visuals of Voldemort is the fact that he's got like no nose. He's got like this snake slit type thing going on. They did most of all this stuff with makeup. You know, they painted his face to be a little more pale. They gave him all like these veins and stuff over his head and whatnot, but he still has a nose. A lot of the time there are no tracking markers and some of the close-ups they do have the tracking markers. They would then obviously track his head and try to just recreate that. They had a very accurate photo scan of his entire head both with and without the makeup and prosthetic on. And then in compositing, try to use as little of that as possible. Because some of the time, they only need to just kind of replace just the nose here. Other times, they would have to replace everything from the eyebrows down to the bottom lip. That's so much work, man. That's, that's like the not fun part of the effects. Yeah, they said it was a very painstaking process, but they had to make sure it was done as perfectly as possible because it's a face. Even though it's a weird, crazy looking alien face, it is still a face. And if they get any of that wrong, it just doesn't look right. Dude, right away that smoke effect's pretty sweet. Just yeah. like right off the bat. Oh yeah, dude. This is the guy with a leaf blower off the side of the frame. <laughs> I love that movie where it like, pulls in the energy and like turns it into a fireball. Oh yeah, dude. That's so sick. Dude, this part, this part right here. Coolest water ball I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, look how good that is, dude. Oh my God. Dude, this right here is so cool. He looks so frail when he puts his arms I know, up. Like, I know, I know, I know. Like, am I just like, 
Okay, that's a little less cool now. <laughs> I agree, they look like little chicken wings. <laughs> Man, what a scene. There's a lot to unpack there. Let's get started with, I don't know, the wand effects? Like, are you talking about like the, the juicy, liquid, melty, yeah, wobble type yeah, effects? Exactly. That's a really easy effect to do in After Effects. You just use this plugin called Trap Code Particular. I've done it extensively. You think you could pull that off with Trap Code? I did pull it off with Trap Code. I did a whole short film with it. That's awesome. You gave it the liquidy goops? Yeah, and they land on the ground and everything. So these guys are using a program called RealFlow. RealFlow is like a liquid simulation tool that allows you to get you know these liquidy, droopy, droppy effects here. They're mixing practical and visual effects. They got a bunch of lights blasting the actors. That's like critical to selling magical effects like that is like if you have something that's generating light, you can't just add it into the scene without having that light. You have to actually have it there in person. Well, you can add it into the scene, but it's very, 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 very hard to make it look good. It's yeah. just a waste of time. It's like, do it on set. Yeah, just And it's gonna look light. many times better if you do it for real. This is the fifth movie. In the fourth movie, we see this wand effect happening for the first time in the graveyard between Harry and Voldemort. And they actually use the old cache data from the fourth movie and put it into the scene into the fifth movie. And when we say cache, we're not talking about like Benjamins. We're talking about C-A-C-H-E. <laughs> <laughs> it's a memory cache, basically. So they did a fight scene in another film, and they're doing another scene where it's basically the same angle, where it's just two dudes shooting wands at each other, and they're like, look, we can just use our same goop simulation. We have the cache, it's already done. We don't have to simulate it. Just drop those polygons into the new scene, call it a day. So for this movie, they shot more practical elements than all the previous four movies had combined. What? Yeah, the way they get it to look so real is they film real elements. But we're looking at a snake here. They didn't possibly ignite a snake on fire. How would they do that? So the snake is a 3D model and there's like flames that are comped on that are probably some real fire bits. But the big thing that makes it look extra good is there's something called fluid simulation happening. I'm not talking about water, I'm talking about gases. It's all these tricks that are up the sleeves of these VFX artists to try to really sell this stuff and make it real. So the way they did this, it's a mixture of 2D and 3D. They got a giant like six foot glass sphere that they shot high pressure water into. They got elements of the thing dripping. They got a huge dump tank that they dumped the water out and they filmed all of this. Oh man. They did it for real. But the top half of this is a real flow simulation. They're mixing this together in such a beautiful way. And when the ball falls apart, that's just the dump tank footage that's comped in perfectly too. So cool, man, what a scene. This is such a great example of combining practical and digital. The scene would have not nearly been as good if there wasn't half of it being done practically, in my opinion. It'd be lackluster at best. Guys, that was a magical episode, very much like our sponsor, Vessi, dealing out these magical shoes. These shoes truly are magical because they're waterproof. They're not water resistant, they're waterproof. It feels like wearing socks too. You might as well be casting the driest spell you got on both your feet. You might as well be levitating above the water because these shoes are keeping your feet dry. And also guys, these shoes, they're sustainably made. If that didn't get you, here's the kicker guys. These shoes are made from Dymatex. It's a dual knit material. Dumbledore's cape was made from Dymatex as well. It keeps your feet warm in the winter and cool in the summer, just like Hogwarts. Guys, they're vegan. They're vegan shoes, believe it or not. No mandrakes were harmed during the creation of these shoes. So you, you know, you can wear them without feeling guilty every step of your day. This is, this is the best part. If you click the link in the description and use the code Corridor Crew, you guys will save 25 bucks off your pair of Vessi shoes. It's totally worth it. The shoes are awesome, keeping your feet dry, and they're keeping your Gringotts accounts nice and high. So click that link, guys. You guys, look, the closest you can get to the Hogwarts experience is right here. This is the real magic. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, we're gonna do part two very soon to kind of talk about some more stuff. We didn't even talk about Dobby. We didn't talk about Quidditch. Yeah, dude, Quidditch. The janky Quidditch match in the first movie. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to just dig into oh, that. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch more that we've already looked into and we wanna tell you all about it. The chair transformation scene where dude, he's right? like a couch and then he turns into the professor. Like God, <laughs> there's so much good stuff.